Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for uh, that extra hour's sleep. Obviously, some people needed more than that hour, so they're not here today, Lord. So uh, we ask you to lift them up wherever they are, and those that aren't here because they're not feeling well, Lord, let them be blessed by you. Lord, that you give us a covering and an understanding and let your word stand firm here today, Lord, that we get what you need us to hear today. That that's why we're here, to hear what you have to say, Lord, that your word holds true, Lord. Lift us up, encourage us. Find the devil from being around us all day today, Lord. Let us have just an awesome day walking in your will. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. I want to welcome the guys that are uh, up the mountain at the hotel and uh, Freedom and Harmony, all the men and women that might be watching today. So uh, welcome. Anybody that's watching at home, thank you for uh, the donations that have been coming in. We can always use more. I want to thank all that. Um, so there's a question out there. And this question is uh, at multiple places. But the question is, what is the nature of your wrongs? What is the nature of your wrongs? So what people usually come up with is, well, I was a bank robber. That's, that's what I did. Uh, I was an adulterer. I lived in sin. I didn't live in marriage. I had children out of wedlock. I did drugs that I should not have do. I stole from people that I loved. I hurt many people. I continuously lied and lied and lied. And I, out of all that, I expected a different result than what continuously happened. I always get the same result. I lived in this wronging of my life. And now I've listed it. But that's not the question. The question is, what is the nature of my wrongs? So what that really means is, why do I do it? Not what did I do, why did I do it? That's the actual question. Did I do it because I'm no good? Did I do it because I'm psychopathic? Did I do it because... I was hurt. Why did I become this way? So the simple answer is, I have a sin nature. And I fell into sin. I wanted to live in a godly life, but I fell away from God's rules. So I went and did whatever the world told me, whatever, whatever place I was at told me was okay. But I didn't go back to the Bible to find out what was okay because I didn't want to hear what the Bible had to say was okay. I wanted to do whatever I felt like doing. And that's my sin nature. How did that come about? So we're going to start in Romans chapter 5, verse 17. For if by the one man's offense death reigned, through the one much more, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of the righteousness will reign in the life through the one, Jesus Christ. So in other words, my sin nature came because Adam took a bite of the apple. Once he took that bite, all mankind got a nature inside that says, I like to steal. I like to run around. I like to do things. The first thing they did, as soon as they took a bite, they went and hid from God. So when we run around and we do all this stuff that we're doing against God's will, we think we're actually hiding from Him. Guess what? He knows. And at some point, you have to be held accountable to it. All sin has to be held accountable. No matter how you do it. The problem is we think we're not going to be held accountable, so we continue. Or we think that we're going to be so held accountable that we're only going to be able to go to hell. 
And that's not true, because he just said it. Those who receive an abundance of grace and a, of the gift of righteousness will reign in the life through the one Jesus Christ. We get it all back. It's all given to me. Freedom is given to me. By what? By Christ paying the penalty on the cross for my sins. For my stealing. For my drug use. For my lying. For my running around like a wild man. He paid that price. Now when someone pays that price for me in life, if they paid my bail, if they paid my fines, if they helped me out of a jam, if I needed rent, right? Someone paid it. I gave them the greatness. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I don't know if I could diligently seek God. I know when I stole stuff, I diligently seeked out someone to buy that. <laughs> I would go far out of my way to make sure that I made some money from someone that I could relieve myself of this with. I know if I was hungry and I made a phone call and someone was bringing me food, I had relief in that. Faith. Faith is believing that something is coming without yet having it. How do I identify with that? My car breaks down. I have no way to get help. Finally, I think of a name, I call it, and they're on their way to help me. Joy gets in my heart. I'm in need of some medication, legal or not. <laughs> as soon as I make a phone call and I know it's on the way, I have relief in my heart. Faith. Faith that it's coming. When I have that faith, and I put that faith that God is going to be what? My rewarder. It just said right here. He is a rewarder. He's going to reward me. Just by me believing that he's going to reward me, he already has rewarded me. Because no matter what the storm is, he's given me peace. My choice. I don't have to have it. I don't have to accept it. I don't have to take it. You know, it's like the person that... I know he's going to show up, but he probably did half of it on the way here. <laughs> God doesn't do that. God says, I am going to be here, and I will reward you. Diligently seek me. When you're in pain, seek me. When you're in need, seek me. I will reward you. Revelations chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. God saying that. That's a promise. God saying, if you invite me in, I will come in, and we will feast together. We will actually feast together. I've been knocking on your door your whole life. I've picked you up out of places you never thought you should be able to get out of and put you on your way. But you didn't think it was me. You thought it was luck. You thought it was life. You thought it was whatever someone told you, but it was me. I'm right here. I'm dying to help you. I've given you my son so you don't have to be held accountable for all the <clears throat> sins that you've done. Accept me. And we say maybe. The challenge is to just have total faith in him as we have faith in the world, in the worldly things that we accept have done for us. John chapter 1, <coughs> verse 16. And if of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace. 
He's given us so much grace. We're overflowing with grace for all the actions that we've done. They're gone. Here it is. Here's a boatload of forgiveness. Have it. All you got to do is believe in me and it's yours. For the law was given through Moses, right? So we had the laws. You had to do this. And if you did a violation, you had to sacrifice this. You had to do this penance. You had to do whatever they had in line through the laws of Moses. Through the laws of Moses, the people in my church, including myself, probably would have been dragged outside and stoned to death for our actions in life. But we don't live in that time. We live in grace. What happens in grace? But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Our bill was paid on the cross. Live like it. Act like it. Show the world that they have a way out of the misery that they're in. I don't care what they've done. Many women are so, so wrecked because they had an abortion. They can be forgiven. All they got to do is ask. It's gone. It's gone. How? Christ paid for it on the cross. As heinous as we think that is, he still paid for that for the cross. It doesn't mean go have them and you'll be forgiven because you're going to have to pay a penalty if you know ahead of time that Christ can't forgive you and you decide to go do that. Hold on to your hat. He doesn't want you to violate what his rules are, especially if you already know them. You'll pay for it here. But he says, if you have in the past and you think you can't come to me because of it, you're wrong. Come to me with whatever you have in your heart and your life, and I will forgive you with grace upon grace. He just said that. He just said that. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. When you are in the worst jackpot you ever thought you were in, just come to him and he will give you grace upon grace. Come to him. We run to everything else in the world. We mostly, you know, the world tells us, take a pill. Take a pill for this. Take a pill for that. You're constipated? Take a pill for that. You're unconstipated? Take a pill for that. <coughs> Make up your mind. Everything is. Give me a pill. And I follow that. I follow what the world tells me for decisions to do. I don't want to do what the world tells me to do. I want to do what God tells me to do. I want to walk my life as if Jesus Christ made the path. Guess what? He did. He made the path for me to walk in. He gave me gifts. He gave me money. He gave me a house. I have money in my pocket. I walk by a man who's in the streets that needs help. I don't keep that money. I give it. I don't give him all my money. I know I'm not going to give it to him run, and run around reckless with it. I'll buy him a pack of cigarettes. I'll get him a bite to eat. I know back in the day when I ran the detox down in Massachusetts when I was working hard at that one, I would ride around with my booze in the car. And if I found a guy that was Jones and he got booze. He could die if he don't have that. I wasn't even saved then. That was when I was being picked up, shooken off, and put on my merry way. Pay attention. I'm knocking on your door. I've been knocking on your door your whole life. You're not here for the fun of it. You're here because I chose you. If you have a relationship and it's blessed by me, I pick the person for you. But it can't be blessed by me if you don't encounter it through marriage. If you're running that life as if you're married and you're not married, then you're going to be held accountable to that. Not you, the relationship. It can't be blessed by God as a relationship. You can be blessed individually as a person, but the relationship can't be blessed by God because it's ungodly. If you're having premarital sex, it can't be blessed by God. He says that. But I want a different outcome this time. I want it to be blessed this time. This is the person. This is the one. The relationship starts to fall apart, and I go, what's up, God? 
You didn't follow the rules. <laughs> it's not that hard. Pretty simple. I think I can go out and get high one more time. Oops. The wreckage is ten times the last one. You didn't follow the rules. Don't get high no more. I pulled you out of the gutter. I got you into straightness. I got you into a sober house. I got you into a job. I got you into a new life. Or you did it yourself. Or you did it with a program. No, I did it. God says, I did it. Follow my guidelines. You will make it through life. And we'll do it in grace. We'll do it in grace. <coughs> I suppose there's no grace in me today. I'm coming boldly. I'm coming boldly to you because I'm told to go boldly to the cross. Come boldly to God. <coughs> Lord, help me. But I want to do it my way. <laughs> he says, okay, go ahead. I give you free will. Problem inside free will is you're still going to be accountable for the actions that you do. Grace doesn't give you the right to go break the violations of the code of God. Don't steal, don't lie, be good to one another. Love me more than anything. Anything means that if all of a sudden I come up with the money because someone graced me with the money to fix my car, I don't praise that person more than I praise God, put that person in my life so that that could happen. That's how it happened. How did I end up in church today? How did I end up watching? How did I end up hearing the word of God? Because he wanted you here. He wanted you to hear this. He wants me to hear this. I hear this half the time more than others. It's more about him talking to me when I read these verses. He gave me a wife. He gave me a wife. She thinks she picked me, I think I picked her, and we're both wrong. Right? Why? Why did God give me my wife? Because it's the only person on the planet that could have stayed with me through what we went through. He chose that. He knew that trouble was coming down the road, because when we met, there was no trouble in my life. Not compared to what was coming. Although there was some heinous trouble in there, now that I think of it. But what came down the road, you can't endure. You can't endure as a couple. But you can through God. And we weren't godly, and we weren't living godly. Well, I wasn't. <laughs> Yet he held us together. He kept the whole thing together. We couldn't. Not capable. Living in the eyes of the flesh. Horrible. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. That we have maintained mercy and find grace to in the time of need. In the time we're living in such a time of need, right? We live in such a time of need, it's like incredible. But yet we have the grace of God to cover every single thing that we have done, or are doing, or are going to do. It's covered in grace. We just have to come boldly to Him and ask for His help. And He loves us so much that He put His Son to pay the payment for all our sins. Don't let the world tell you that you're no good. I believed it. I was no good. I didn't do good things. And I fell into that. I wasn't capable of doing good things. That was a lie. I'm not capable of not swearing. That's a lie. I'm not capable of not stealing. That's a lie. I, I don't even know how long it's been since I stole something. I can't even attempt to steal something. It's like, it's, it's crazy. I drive around here, we're in, in New Hampshire, the free land. There's, there's four wheelers sitting in people's front yards. There's, <laughs> there's snowmobiles. They'd be gone, man. <laughs> They'd be gone. It's like, this is crazy God. How come I'm not putting that in the back of the truck? <laughs> My nature says, go do that. It says, take that. Well, remember, me and Trish went to the bank one day and we cashed a check or something, and they gave us too much money back. School. We couldn't do it. We had to go.
go back inside the bank and say, here, here's the money. You gave us too much money. Are you kidding me? We lost our minds. But we have peace in that. We have peace in that. Forgiveness of the people that have done things wrong to us and the forgiveness of the things that we've done to people. Whether well, they want to forgive me or not, I don't care. God has forgiven me. I get to walk in that grace. And I walk upright in it. I'm not ashamed. I'm, the things that I did were wrong. I apologize. I hope I can be forgiven. But if not, I am not that person. I am this person I walk in now. Why? Because God's given me that grace. I don't care if anybody else does. And there's many that won't. Have a good day. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Period. Done. God says, I can't even bring it up. Well, I bring everybody's stuff up all the time. <laughs> I'm not supposed to. I'm supposed to be forgiven. I forgive you. It's done. It's gone. It's over with. Uh, remember last time I did that for you? <laughs> then I really didn't forgive you, did I? God can't say that. So when you feel in your heart that God hasn't forgiven you, that's a lie from the devil telling you so that you'll stay in the misery that the devil wants you to stay in and your sin nature likes. Your sin nature likes misery, you know. It's sinful. It has to. It can't like happiness. That's why it's so hard to find a time and a place where I can just sit back and have some peace. I'm just going to enjoy peace today. What are we doing? Where are we going? How are we getting there? God forgives me of all my sins, all my lawless deeds. doesn't mean I'm not going to have thoughts of them. I think about it all the time when there's a four-wheeler sitting there. <laughs> But I don't have to put action to the thought anymore. I don't have to follow through and do the deed. And I get blessed for that. I get blessed for that but because now if I really needed to, I have credit, I could go buy one. I have money in my pocket, I could find a decent used one. I have those things given to me by God. Not because I work hard, not because I have many things, because I'm a nice guy, because I should have those things. Because God gives them to me. He could have me homeless and I'm still going to act as if God is the leader and in charge because he is. No matter where I am or what I'm doing, he's in charge of it all. He's given it all to me. We're selling our house. Four days we sold our house. Four days. Why? Because we got a perfect piece of property? I don't think so. Because God set this in play. He set this in play before I was born. <laughs> he knew this was going to be coming. He knew this was what we are going to need to go from here to there. He knew we'd be working up at the new place that we're working at. <coughs> he knew the house that we picked. <coughs> we picked a house to go by. And of course, I lose faith. Oh, the bank's not going to pass this. The bank's not going to pass that. They're not doing this. They're not doing that. Worry me. My sinful nature comes up. Doesn't want to have faith in God to accept that this is already done. It's already a done deal. Just act like it. Stop acting like a, a stupid, unfaithful pastor and agree that God's already done all this stuff for you. Well, I don't know. You put more rubbish in the yard. That's not going to go. <laughs> bank's not going to like that. Right? I fall away. Why? Because my nature likes to. My nature. What is the nature of my wrongs? I like sinning. That's the nature of my wrongs. I like getting high. I like getting on my bike and driving like a maniac down in Massachusetts. Only in Massachusetts. <laughs> I like the friends that I had in that insanity. Driving down the road and kicking cars and pushing people out of the way. And being mean and heading someplace else to be with meaner people. <laughs> it's 
Sign me up. Man, there's no mercy in that. There's no grace in that, man, because if you fall out of line in that group of people, you're going to be in debt. You're going to pay for that penalty. There's going to be accountability like you can't believe here to you physically, mentally, spiritually. <laughs> With God, he says, you're good. You're okay. You're all set. You don't have to worry about nothing. It's done. It's paid for. Just accept me into your heart and let me come with you. Come on, God, wait a minute. Sit down. I got it. I'll take care of it. That's what I'm saying when I don't invite him with me. I told God to sit down. And he does. I can tell God to go sit down. I don't want him there. And he has to go do that. That's how much power he gives us in our free will. He says, go ahead. Just like a good father says, go ahead. You need to fall down to find out that you need me to help you. <laughs> the penalties and pains of what the flesh in life does destroys relationships that God put together. Because we look for flesh answers in a spiritual warfare. Everything that's going on right now is spiritual warfare. Total spiritual warfare. Good against evil. No matter how you do it, it's good against evil. And those that can't see the evil is because the veil is over their eye of the goodness. They can't see it. So they think they're righteous, just like we do. I never promote voting. I never promote a political stance. Today I'm going to announce whose team I'm on. Because I want to stand strong for the person that I believe in. So I wore my, my t-shirt today. Are you ready? Yeah. I am on Team Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and that's who's in charge. And that's who's going to have the results of this election. And that's who's going to watch whichever way it's going. He's going to see the direction of it. No matter what we do, you still should vote. I go to vote, and I go to vote with God on my heart, and I invite him in that booth with me to tell me who to pick. <coughs> and it may not be the one that everybody thinks you ought to be. Because he's in charge. No matter how much we think this person ought to be in charge, he's in charge, and he's going to have us pick. Why? Because he has written a book that it has to follow and the book of Revelations has to happen. The world has to go down the toilet. And that's what has to happen. Whether you believe it or not. That's what this does. And if I have faith in this book then I believe that that's what's going to happen, I don't care who's in office. <laughs> Jesus says in the midst of that, you can come to me and I will give you peace in your heart. Reign over your emotions. Take charge of yourself. Stop living the life of the world and live with me. Come boldly and ask me. I'll take care of you. I have been all your life. He's put so many opportunities in my life that I denied and he knew. Then he placed another one and another one and another one. Do you think God is up there going, ah, I made a mistake on that one? I don't think so. He can't make a mistake. But yet we think, oh man, he made a mistake on that one. No, he didn't. So instead, how about, wow, I can't wait to see what the outcome of this is. I can't wait to see what God's going to do in here. This book has to come true. Revelations has to come true. How's it going to happen? We believe that in there it says that you have to have the mark of the beast on you in order to get food, in order to get jobs, in order to have an income, in order to have housing. You will have to put this mark upon you. How's that going to happen? You know the world. They can't make us do anything. We got freedom. We got guns. We can do whatever we want to do. I don't know about that. 
It's starting to get to a point where you can't even talk about things or they shut you off. But today, I want you to think of this. What is the nature of your wrongs? Why do you actually do the things do you do? Is it because of God's free will and Adam's bite of the apple that you have sin nature? That you go into the things that you do? Or is it because you're no good? Is it because it's the world's fault? Is it because people did things to you? What is the wrong of your nature? It's not the things that you did, but the nature of why you did it. Why did you really do it? Why do you continue to do things outside the book of, of God and expect a different result? Why? What's the nature of that? Read this book, it will tell you. You can have full blessings, full freedom, and a full understanding of everything that you do in life through the understanding and the reading and the acceptance of Jesus Christ in your heart. Amen? Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this time and this place, Lord, that you just, you've given us so much that we ask you, if anybody out there hasn't received you, let this be the time or the place. All they have to do is say quietly in their own heart, Dear Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. Forgive me. Come into my heart and live. I want to know you. With that said, Lord, you know who said that. Touch their heart. Give them peace. Give them comfort. Let them have an understanding of grace in their life, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen.